Do you guys remember those simpler days when a Game Boy came out? You didn't have to look for so many options and you just had to go right ahead and get that particular model. And when you compare that to now, the scene have entirely changed. There are so many handhelds releasing back to back and you'll be confused which one to get. And having said that, we're gonna have a look at this awesome portable PC handheld called AUK Sovi A1. So let's get started. If you guys are planning to buy one, the best place to buy is Cool Game Geek. The link is in the description. Please make sure you guys check it out. To start with, I'm actually surprised how many companies are jumping onto a portable PC bandwagon, especially companies like GPD, INEO, One X Player, and now Lenovo and Asus have also decided to join. So where does the AOK Zoe stand when you compare with these other handhelds? Let's find out. Alright so last week I put a community poll asking how much would you pay to buy a handheld and I gave all these options and this was the result. So from this I understood not a lot of people are ready to spend more than $200 on a handheld. So just a heads up we are going to talk about a handheld which is worth more than $700. Is it worth the hefty price tag? We'll find out in a few minutes. I'm going to do a size comparison with all my horizontal handhelds, starting from the smallest and going all the way up. As you can see, AUK Zoe A1 is a very large device compared to any of my other handhelds I have till date. Talking about the specs of my unit, it has a Ryzen 7 6800U, a 16GB LPDDR5 RAM, this came with a 512GB storage, it has an awesome 8 inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 it has a 65 watt hour battery, it has Wi-Fi, it has Bluetooth, and runs Windows 11 as its main operating system. And finally some cool features like gyro, RGB, rumble, analog triggers, etc. Nope, this is not an airplane cabin ASMR white noise video. This is actually how loud its fan can be. <laughs> yeah, apart from that, the face buttons are pretty awesome. It's glossy, big and has a nice feel to it. No complaints about the analog sticks. These are pretty accurate. And when it comes to the D-pad, at first glance I was not a fan of it, but when I started using it, I figured it's not too bad as I thought it would be. Next we have a back button, start button, on the bottom right we have a mouse button, as well as to open an on-screen keyboard button and a control panel button. And on the bottom left we have a show desktop button and there are two front firing speakers. On the top we have a power button, a volume button, headphone jack, USB port and a USB 3.0 port. I really like these high quality trigger and shoulder buttons. It's pretty grippy and has a good travel to it. On the back it has a nice sturdy kickstand and finally on the bottom we have a USB-C port as well as a SD card slot. Overall holding the device feels great in the hand and if you're thinking how much it weighs, it's the same weight of the Steam Deck, which is 674 grams. But please bear in mind, there are two different battery models. I have the lighter one. I like the color of this device, but this graphic design looks like something from early 2000 where I first got into PC gaming. The person who designed it definitely needs to get into a time machine and come back to 2023. So this has vertical orientation too and it's super useful if you want to play some steam vertical shooter games like Radiant Silver Gun, Ikaruga 
all in Tate mode and this feature can't be done on a Steam Deck because of its weird control placements. The best thing I like about this device is this big screen and when you hold it in the hand it's okay for my size hand but if you're someone with small hands I'm not sure if you're gonna enjoy extended play sessions like I do. Next I'm gonna go ahead and test the limit of this handheld by putting the TDP all the way to 28 watts first and then go down a bit and find out what is the ideal TDP which is suitable for most of the games. So this is with 28 watts and you get an average of 55 FPS but as you can see the temperature becomes high, the fan speed will be loud plus it will drain a lot of battery. So now I have reduced to 15 TDP and the fan speed have noticeably reduced and the temperature have also reduced and as you can see there is less drainage of battery and I have tested out so many games and I think I will use something between 15 to 18 TDP for most of the games. Now let's check out more games and please make sure to keep an eye on that TDP and average FPS so you guys can get an idea how it performs. From this you can understand that some games don't even need that much TDP to run and emulation of PS2 and below will be a walk in a park for such a powerful device like this. I'm actually waiting for an item to be shipped to my address which I'll be connecting directly to this device to do a review of the emulation so please stay tuned for that. Now one thing to note as a big difference is the fact that Steam Deck and Rogue Ally has support. Especially the support from Valve is unmatched and my question is this. Is AUK Soe support as good as the rest? I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about that. Now I'm sure you guys heard about the Legion Go is about to come out next month and probably then we'll see a big reduction in the price to maybe $600 to compete with it. And just to put it out there, the A1 Pro is already out. So if you're opting for a more powerful handheld, there are options for you. But for me, it's hard to find a device currently in the market with an 8 plus screen for under thousand dollars as far as I seen. At the end of the day, the base model Steam Deck is around 400 bucks. The ROG Ally is $600 and this device is 700 bucks plus. For me, I always wanted something with a bigger screen than both these devices. And I think I'll be spending most of my time playing on this device even though I have a much more powerful laptop. To be honest there is not much to complain about this device and I would like to give it a 4.5 out of 5 and you can expect some comparison videos happening soon. And if you found this video helpful please make sure you guys leave a like, do comment what you think about this device, until next time, ciao.